Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. Sean Mendez, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Sean Mendez. How do you hear me? Sean, we have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. It is such an honor to speak with you guys. I feel so giddy and excited right now. Um, I just want to say I'm so happy uh, and excited to be doing this to help educate young people about our planet right now. This is really, really spectacular. Um, before we get started, I know that there's a lot of new fans and viewers watching right now, so would you guys all mind introducing yourselves? Absolutely, and happy Earth Day. Uh, I'm Dr. Shannon Walker, the current commander of the International Space Station. Hi, I'm Mike Hopkins, a colonel of the United States Space Force, as well as a NASA astronaut. I'm the commander of the SpaceX uh, Crew Dragon Resilience and a flight engineer here on the International Space Station. Hi, happy Earth Day. Uh, konnichiwa. Uh, Soichi Noguchi, Japanese Space Agency. Happy to talk to you. Happy Earth Day, Commander Victor Glover, flight engineer aboard the International Space Station and pilot of Crew Dragon Resilience. Happy Earth Day. My name is Mark Vandehei. I am an Ex Expedition 65 crew member, NASA astronaut, and a retired Ar Army officer. Amazing. I know everybody but Victor has been to space more than once, um, but I also know that Soichi has set a record for the longest time between spacewalks. So, Soichi, congratulations. Um, I just have a quick question. I want to know, how has your perspective of Earth changed after viewing it through the cupola? And Victor, since this is your first space flight, what are some of the impressions you'll take back with you from seeing Earth from space for the first time? Yeah, it's an um, interesting question how Earth has changed um, over the it's actually been 10 years since I've been here. And so um, a couple of things. One thing, uh, when I was here last, it was over the summertime. This time it's been over the winter time. And so the biggest difference I've seen is that the northern hemisphere was covered with snow and ice most of the time uh, this time, whereas last time it was all very green. Crazy. Crazy. Sean, thank you for the question. And um, wow, seeing Earth from here is, is quite spectacular. In fact, it's the most beautiful thing that I've seen up here. Looking out at the stars is great, but seeing the Earth is just so amazing. And it uh, also makes me realize how important it is that we do all that we can to take care of it. You know, it's so incredible. I'm, I'm literally here just like, I cannot believe you guys are all the way up there. It's am am really amazing. Thank you again for, for letting me here to speak with you guys. But um, I know we have a ton of questions from followers and young people around the world about Earth science and about the International Space Station. So I'm just going to start with the questions. So we have the first one, and it comes from Jason Burton on Twitter. And Jason says, how long does it take to get to the space station, and what speed is achieved getting there? Mark, your mic is off. Now with the microphone on. <laughs> um, we're, right now we're traveling five miles a second. Uh, that means we travel or once around the planet every 90 minutes. So every 24 hours we had 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets. For me, on my, the spacecraft that I used to get up here, we arrived within uh, three hours, so twice around the planet to get there. And for the rest of us, the, the four of us, we came up on, again, Crew Dragon Resilience. And, uh, you know, the launch actually took uh, about eight, eight and a half minutes, I think, from the time we uh, lit the rocket until we were in space. And, uh, and then after that, it took another 24, 27 hours before we actually docked to the International Space Station. So we had a little bit of time on board uh, Resilience to have a few meals, have a, few, uh, a nap and, and things of that nature. But it was uh, actually very comfortable, and, but we were very excited when we got on board as well. 
That is so amazing. Um, our next question we have is from Jaden. It's going to be a video. Uh, my name is Jaden. I'm free. Mr. Astronaut. Why do we be so angry in space? Jaden, that is an excellent question. And you know, there's Ms. Astronaut as, as well. Um, Energy can be produced from a variety of ways. You can use solar energy. You can get energy from water. You can use gasoline. You can burn coal. There's even nuclear energy. Well, on the space station, what we have the most of is sunlight. And so that is why we use solar energy to power our space station. Amazing. Super cute. Our next question is from Sloan. Hi, my name is Sloan. I am 10 years old, and my question is, what are some Earth experiments you can do from the space station? <laughs> so, uh, on my previous flight, we did an experiment with trying to understand the sun's energy input into the Earth. And during Expedition 65, we're going to do an experiment on uh, cotton root systems. We're trying to get a better understanding about how environmental factors like being in orbit, the genes of seeds, all those things affect uh, the resilience of plants. So we're really curious to see how those results work out. And there's lots more going on. And you know, one of the other things we get to do in terms of experiments for the Earth is we get to take pictures. Now, that, uh, they call it work, but it's also a lot of fun uh, when we get to take pictures uh, of the Earth and, uh, and then people on the ground can analyze those pictures and, and get a better understanding of what's going on down there. I love how you guys pass the mic. It's just like a subtle toss across. <laughs> so the next question is from Merritt on Twitter. And Merritt says, what types of projects will the Expedition 65 crew be working on while aboard the ISS? Oh, gosh, we talked about solar arrays a little while ago. We've got some improved uh, rollout solar arrays that we're going to install, continue to install on EVAs coming up. So we're actually going to... Um, do a number of spacewalks. I think the plan has four during Expedition 65 to make progress towards uh, improving our solar array energy production capability. Thank you. Now we have Raya with a very, very important question for you. I think there's an image. Do I have to click on the image? I can, I can read it. Raya says, in what ways can a student contribute in environmental protection? You know, one of the most important things, you know, we talk about recycling and, and things like that, but up here we have to also think about the way that we live. And so all of us can consider how we live and what we consume. And it's not just important to recycle. Recycling is important, but also to reuse. And I think that's something we do really well up here. We recycle water. We, we repurpose things like packaging uh, to, to use it for other uh, purposes uh, and then in reducing as well when we can reducing the things that we use but also reducing the things that we use because of the impact that the waste can have on the planet so that's something that we all can uh, do better to take care of earth I think there's some other things to do as well. Um, NASA's got a lot of ways that students can participate in what we call citizen um, science. And so NASA's got projects out there that you can go to at climate.nasa.gov gov and uh, look at things because we are we're we need people all over the world to collect data for us and then other researchers take all that data such as the number of clouds how high the trees are when flowers start to bloom and uh, they can understand what's happening around the world and then also if you are a little bit older you can even work for NASA come work for us because we do a lot of climate si climate science you guys do a lot of cool stuff um, the next question comes from Hank. Um, um, hi, my name is Hank, and I am a 
almost seven years old, and my question is, can you study the ocean from the space station? Okay, thanks for the very good question. Yes, we can still study ocean from space. Actually, this is the best place on Earth to study ocean. Every day, you know, I would say more than half of the time we look out the window, that's ocean. And it's not boring, actually. Every day is a different and a different color, different wind and different clouds. So uh, it's so fascinating. Actually, we take a lot of pictures of ocean. So hopefully that the, the scientists on the ground can study from our uh, crew photo. Amazing. So the next question is from Winnie. My question is, can you see a volcano erupting from space? Because my island is being affected by a volcano right now. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you for that great question, and it's great to hear your voice up here. So we actually can see volcanoes. As Mark mentioned earlier, we rotate around the Earth once every 90 minutes, so it depends on where we are in our orbit. But we are able to see them, and we're also able to see the effects that they can have. Just last week, we were trying to get photos of the plume and the ash in the atmosphere because we're so high up that we can see it from this unique vantage point. Yeah, actually, it's very good uh, Good thing. So our intention is to capture all the natural disasters happening on the ground. And uh, actually, I can eyes more like a volcano, hunters. Mm -hmm. So we are we're catching all the volcanoes. I got the Mount Eton in Italy and the uh, volcano in Kamchatka. And he's looking for the Caribbean. But we are always watching you. <laughs> <laughs> volcano hunters, it's so good. Um, so obviously food is such an important part of our daily lives as people of Earth. So Floyd on Twitter wants to know if any of you are vegetarian and if so, what do you guys eat? No, that is a great question. I think right now we don't have any vegetarians in space, but I will tell you that vegetables are my favorite thing to eat. And so um, we eat a lot of vegetables up here, and we even grow some, some plants up here because one of the things we need to understand is if we're going to live in space for longer and longer periods of time or if we're going to other places, the moon or Mars, we're going to need to be able to grow our food. And so we study how plants grow, and then we eat them. <laughs> Amazing. The next absolutely adorable question is from Yael. Hi, I'm at Alan. I'm five. I keep looking for unicorns on Earth, but have you seen them in space? Have we seen any unicorns in space? Well, so far, the answer is no. We have not seen any unicorns up here, but we're going to keep looking. And you know, one place that we might actually have our best chance of seeing uh, a unicorn is, have you ever just laid out in your backyard and watched the clouds go by and you can see shapes up there? Well, I tell you what, we see a lot of clouds up here, and I think we're all going to take an extra special look and see if we can't see a unicorn in the clouds. Perfect. I'll be looking for some unicorns, too. Um, so we imagine you guys get to see some incredible things none of us on Earth could ever even imagine. So our next question comes from Sophia Campbell. Hi, NASA. I'm Sophia, and I'm in seventh grade. And here's my question. What is the most amazing thing that you can see on Earth from space that you can't see here on the ground? Sophia, that is a great question, and I would say it was actually the very first view that I had when I looked out the window of Crew Dragon Resilience, and I could see so much of the Earth. You know, humankind, we invented telescopes and microscopes so that we could see things at our own level with our own eyes. And so to be able to see an entire country or an entire ocean with my own eyes was truly amazing. And so I really wish that more people could get up here and see that same view. Also, another thing that's amazing is we get to see the top of the atmosphere. So looking at space, the atmosphere looks like a thin puddle of, of atmosphere on top of the, uh, this beautiful rock we call home. 
it seems like a very precious layer. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> Next, we have a question from Julian. Happy birthday, my name is Julian. I'm four and a half years old. My question is, what is the urban summer cloud? <laughs> Julian, that's a great question. And, um, you know, I would say a short answer is that it's because we have so much water on the planet. And clouds are one way that water is able to move around the earth, which is so vital. We have oceans and rivers. We have rain and snow. And clouds are just another form of water moving all over the planet that helps to keep us alive and comfortable. I could watch you guys do this all day. <laughs> Sevi and Logan are asking something I've actually always wondered myself. Happy birthday. My name is Sevi and I am five. My name is Logan and I'm 13. We know you love looking at the earth. We love looking at the stars. We heard that the stars look different in the Southern Hemisphere than they do for us. So we were wondering, how do the stars look from space? Well, thank you for the great questions. Actually, yeah, we can see the stars from here. Actually, the best view is uh, from the, our own Crew Dragon Resilience. He has the best view in town because from the Dragon window, we can see the, the velocity vector, the way we are flying into, and there's nothing blocking our view. The other day, we, ha we captured the very, very beautiful Milky Way, and it's just, just out, of our, out of our world. So this is really the best view. Mm. And I would add to that that up here you can see so many more stars than you can see. They look pretty much like uh, stars on the ground because we're not that much closer to the stars, but you can see so many more because you don't have the clouds, you don't have the atmosphere in the way, you just have you and the stars. So beautiful. Uh, Noah and Yael are curious about Earth systems. Hi, I'm Noah. I'm seven. Can you see hurricanes from space? What about snowstorms? <laughs> what about snowstorms? So can you see hurricanes from space? Yes, you can. In fact, uh, as we've been talking up here, you can see the whole hurricane, and that's pretty neat to be able to see it. You can see the eye and how it's forming. Uh, but one of the things that's interesting about up here, when you see that whole hurricane, you're pretty amazed and you start taking pictures and all of that of it, but then you forget that there are people in danger down on earth with the hurricanes and all that. So sometimes it's easy to lose perspective up here of what's actually happening down on the earth. So when we see those hurricanes, we have to remind just how uh, dangerous it is for everybody on the ground. Okay, so there's one last question from me. Um, and this is crazy, but since we've been speaking, you guys have traveled literally about halfway around the Earth, which is insanely surreal to think about. Um, we all know that time is so precious. So do you guys have any tips about how to savor the time and be very, and be very present in the moments we are given? Well, I think the first thing is just to really think about your question to be present, to be in the moment, to be intentional and be mindful. I think just having that in your mind that you want to do that is a great starting point. I think also is is to be grateful for your situation. I know we are always we are all very grateful that we have this opportunity to be up here, but we're also grateful for our friendships and getting to spend time together. Um, it's kind of like a little family up here and and that is good. <laughs> you know, one of the other things that happens when we're up here, um, you know, we talked about all these fantastic views of the earth, uh, but one of the other things it makes you do is it makes you miss the earth. Um, I, I really can't wait to get back uh, to earth. Um, I love being up here in space, but uh, it just doesn't compare to, to being home on, on earth. And I'd add to that that w whenever you're working, having fun, 
whatever you're doing, you have the option to choose to focus on what you're enjoying about it and, and slow down enough to realize that even when things are hard, you can find something to really appreciate about the moment that you're in. Perfectly, perfectly said. Um, I just want to say, lastly, thank you guys so much for helping young people around the world better understand our planet today. And thank you guys so much for spending Earth Day with us. Godspeed to Crew One with your return to Earth next week. And I wish you guys all the best. And Mark, we really look forward to following you along with Crew Two astronauts during your Expedition 65 mission. Thank you guys so, so much. Happy Earth Day. Happy Thank Earth you Day. as well. Happy Earth Day. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you, Mr. Mendez and all our participants. It was an honor to have you aboard the space station today. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>